What the Tech is sponsored by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew. And by Stitcher Radio. Listen on the go via the Stitcher mobile app. For more information, go to stitcher.com slash GFQ. What the tech? Hey everybody, welcome to What The Tech. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by Paul Therat, as I am each and every week. And this week, guys, we really have nothing to talk about. <laughs> yes, we're there's, just going to be treading water. There's absolutely nothing happening in technology. The Surface pricing was not released. Pre-orders were not released for the Surface. Uh, so nothing to see here. We could just uh, skip and do our What If of the Week, right, Paul? Cool. Uh for people who don't know, I was being very sarcastic because everything is taken literally on the internet. Um, yeah, it is when you write it. It is when you write it. Yeah, I have a good name for that guy that takes everything literally. Literal Joe. And I'll <laughs> get emails from Literal Joe almost every week saying, you know, you said that you hate the iPhone, but your wife owns one. <coughs> yes. Well, I hate my wife, too. I so hate my wife also. It actually also. works out really well. Uh, today, the Surface was um, available for pre-order noon east. They also released pricing a couple hours prior to the release. And, you know, very aggressively priced, uh, $4.99, very competitive. I don't know. I don't know. I don't you know don't think I, so? Really? I would say very aggressively priced. Okay, strategically think, priced. Uh, strategic would have been like 100 bucks less. You, you're not happy with the pricing? No, I'm not. E- are never you never happy? You know this. You're never but, happy, but but let, let me let me just go through it. Um, the reason why I think it, it's yeah. priced competitively. Okay. There's no 16 gig model. No, no, sure. And if there was, it would probably be 399, 499, 599, 699. So we don't have that. Okay, except now here's something I don't know, but here's something to okay ask. I guess ask yourself or look at when we get these devices. There's no 16 gig model. But how much memory or how much storage is left on the uh, solid state storage after Windows RT is installed? Is it comparable to how much free space there is on a 16 gig iPad? Oh, that's I, a very good question. I bet it's pretty close. So, oh, you, you think how big is Windows RT? Yeah, how big is WinRT? Right. I don't know. Smaller than Windows 8, right? It is smaller than Windows 8. Yeah. And how big is Windows 8? I I don't know anymore. I you know yeah. I've got all these installs now. It's it's kind of hard to. Well, how big was Windows 7? Hmm? How big was Windows 7? I don't know, Andrew. I don't remember these things. Come I mean, on, Paul. I have, all right, so I have a laptop over here that has... Yeah, 20 Windows gigs. Windows 8. It's basically 17 gigs. I don't know what else. Maybe Office is on there, too. So according like to the chat room, Surface Team said more than 20 gigs. Is left or is... Oh, is left. Okay. All yeah. right, there you go. All right. Okay, so not bad. A little bit better. A little but bit it's better. Not, again, it's not twice as much, right? It's... You know, both of these things occupy some space on the disk. So, and office, you do get office too. I mean, it, it, we should be fair here. You're getting office. Um, I mean, and, you're I, getting- and I have no idea, nor do I care how much free space is on a 16 gig iPad, but, you know, probably 11 or 12, somewhere in there. So, 32 gig, 499. Uh, 32 gig with black touch cover, 599. 64 gig uh, with the touch cover, 699. Yep. So, the 64 gig comes with it. With the touch with the cover. touch cover, you can't get it without. You yeah. can't get it without. And okay, that's I mean that's all right. It's okay. I mean, if you want another color touch cover, you're gonna have two touch covers. Okay, so uh, touch covers come in. Oh, touch service covers come in white, black, cyan, 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 cyclone, cyclone, <laughs> uh, and pink. Yep. And it's about 120 bucks. The surface type cover is 130 bucks. I yep. ordered it with the type cover. As did I. And it came to like 600 and something bucks. You know, I got to go look at my order. I, I swear to God, my order was $750. I wonder if I did something wrong. Maybe you ordered the 64 gig. <laughs> so maybe I'm, I'm having a, a tough day in case it's not obvious. Yeah. A Paul this morning thought I oh. I was Leah Laporte and we were doing Windows Weekly and it was Thursday. 
and he proceeded to tell me that uh, he's not going to be able to he's t- cutting it close today with meetings and i reminded him our show is not at two it's on a four. <laughs> oh, that, that kind of opened up my day nicely you know? <laughs> yeah um, um I- okay so what i did was i ordered the 32 gig version but with the touch cover because i want to try both and then i got the okay. surface type cover and so it's yeah seven you know taxes and whatnot it's like 775 bucks. That's a lot of money. So you brought up something very interesting prior to starting the show. You brought up the fact that the website is still functioning uh, for the pre-orders. Has and been all day. There's and never been a time no. today when you couldn't get into this site. And I did I did the pre-order as soon as it was released. So when the mad yep. rush would have been happening. And I'm guessing no you problem. sailed right through it. Right through it. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is this because Microsoft completely gets e-commerce and Windows Azure is as awesome as they say it is? Um, or is nobody ordering this thing? I mean, they, they made a point of saying, by the way, that this will own, this is a limited pre-order, right? They're, they're, they're supposedly going to sell out of this thing. Uh, is that quick. what they said? I mean, do, are yeah, they it's in there somewhere. I'd have to look it up, but it's in the press release. You know that the pre-order is just while supplies last. Yeah. I mean, so, I don't know. I, by the way, I think it's a, probably a combination of the two. I, I do think that. Uh, this is going to be very successful for Microsoft. I think a lot of people are going to pre-order it. Um, I do actually think they <laughs> they get the web backend thing too. So, um, but it, it's notable that when Apple releases any product, you know, when the iPhone five comes out, uh, people that try to order that thing right away uh, are met with a website that just doesn't work. You know, um, I mean, instantly. I mean, within the first yeah, couple just, of minutes, it comes crashing down. To the it's earth. a grinding so, hold prior. Yeah, to the to the thing. And everyone being knows. Everyone who's done that knows the angst of trying to break through the site to actually order the damn thing. You know, whatever it may be. So I mean, I'm really curious to know how many people actually pre-ordered this. Well, we're going to find out. So I, I think, in, uh, or if we don't, that means not many, right? I mean, I think in the next day or two or three or five, whatever, Microsoft will announce. Uh, you know, the pre-orders have sold out. We've sold. You know, however we, you know, are going to make whatever. So we'll see. The other thing is, you know, I'll be in New York next week and there's going to be a launch event that occurs on, I guess it's uh, Thursday, which is the day before this stuff actually goes on sale. And then there'll be some kind of Midnight Madness thing at the Microsoft pop-up store that's occurring in Times Square. And, you know, people will be able to wait in line at midnight and get a, and get a device that way. And so I'm, really I'm thinking like we're just going to, I think we're going to go hang out in line and just... You know, I may I may stand in line for two hours and then not buy something. I don't know. You think people are going to wait in line at midnight to get it? Yeah, I do. You think so? Okay. I'm going to. So if you're not doing anything at midnight next Thursday, well, you know, uh, you're in, in the in, when, in the area. When is the get together? That's a good question. Let me look that up. It is uh, Thursday, right? Actually, it's Thursday night, but it's before this. So let's see. It is. Um, I wrote this. Soon. I mean, we could get loaded and just go and start yelling at people in Times Square. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's an that's excellent I, idea. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Where is this? <coughs> I read so many articles. It's not even on my front page. Paul and I are going to get drunk, start looking for people with iPads, taking pictures of New York and just slam it to the ground. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Mary Jo Foley about potential next careers. And she was talking <laughs> about um, like beer blogging. And I'm like, I'm all over beer blogging, but I have to be corporate vice president of Hefeweizen. <laughs> so on Thursday, October 25th, we are having a meetup at the Social Bar Irish Pub and Lounge in New York City. Social Bar Irish Pub and Lounge. And lounge, okay. At, from 8 to 11 p.m. It's open in, to anyone who can get there. In Hell's Kitchen. I have no idea. I don't live in New York, I, <laughs> I guess. Social Bar Grill and Lounge. Do you have the address? Social Bar Irish Pub and Lounge. The URL is social bar NYC. Yes. Okay. I know what that is. Very cool. I will be there. So that will be good. I will be there and uh, you can come and meet me there. Forget about Paul. You can meet me and I will be drunk. I'll be really drunk. (laughs) I'm just telling you. I will be drunk. I don't think Paul's met me in person once and I've been sober. You have never not been drinking. Yeah, I may have a problem, Paul. (laughs) You know, my wife says that to me all the time. Yesterday she came home. And we have a, a chess lounge in our bedroom. And I was sitting on the chess lounge. And I was drinking this gigantic 
glass of wine. I mean, just just the whole thing was filled. And as, she goes, as I, which is exactly how I imagine you at home, by the way. <laughs> Constantly, just walking around. I'm like I'm like a New York housewife, just with the New Jersey attitude. Yeah, I'm just yeah. drunk, and I just start fighting with people, flipping tables. Uh, and she walked in. She goes, you know, this entire year, I've never come home and seen you not drinking. I go, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you're about right. <laughs> I couldn't even think of one time, but no, I think it's going to be cool. Now, uh, have you guys made it public? Where where can people? Is there a a website it's that they like can get the information? No, I mean, I, no. I should put something up about this. Uh, no, but like I said, anyone, it's open to the public, so anyone can come in. I'm going to have some copies of the book that I will sign and give away somehow. Uh, some some trivia or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then after we're done, we're going to head over to Times Square and do the stupid you know line thing. Maybe I'll do like a comic, you know, what's the insult the comic dog thing where I'll make fun of everyone waiting in line for a surface. You know what I mean? You know what I could do? Uh, what if I, I just come with the camera and I record some stuff from there? Yeah. Do like a little, uh, you know, just edit a video and put it together the following day. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and a lot of people, last time when you guys had to get together, I don't even remember what it was for. It wasn't for Windows 7, but you guys had like, like a little Windows phone. It was oh, it was for Windows Phone, it was yeah. an unbelievably hot day in New York. Yeah, um, I came down It must that. have been the 7-5 launch. So it was probably last year. And it was like yeah. this time of year, but it was like 80 degrees outside. Remember, it was like hotter than hell that day. I, all I remember is that I got really loaded, and Jess and I were looking for a place to eat, and we found this Argentinian steak place. And we were the last ones in there, and they were so upset that we walked in because they were trying to <laughs> close up. And they just gave us so much food just to get us out of there. They're nice. like, what do you guys want? I'm like, I don't know. It's in Spanish. They're like, okay, we'll just order for you. And they didn't charge us for a thing. They just wanted us to get the hell out of there. That's great. Yeah, so it was great. Um, that was a good day. It was a very good day. So uh, back to the surface. Are, are you, You're not that satisfied with the pricing. I, I, look, here's the problem. I mean, I, I, I would say that these things line up roughly with the iPad pricing, right? I, you know, the surface is $500 to $700. The iPad is five hundred dollars to eight hundred and thirty dollars. Okay, roughly the same. Um, with the iPod, iPad, you have the option of getting cellular broadband, which you do not have on the RT. Which I, inexcusable is may, maybe the wrong term, but okay. I cannot believe that it's not available even as an option. It just seems tough. The other thing is, you know, when you buy an iPad today, this is not two years ago, two and a half years ago. This is now, two thousand twelve. The iPad is a known quantity. There yeah. is an, a large and established and high quality ecosystem built around the iPad. You're not buy, when you buy these things, you're not buying a device. You're buying into the the whole ecosystem. Yeah. You know, with Windows 8, there is almost no ecosystem, right? I mean, obviously there's some. They have uh, you know uh, the music and video store and all that stuff. Yeah, music video. Store, they have Office. It it's not a lot. It's you're, you're really, you're taking a risk with Windows RT in particular. Now, remember, it, if we could, there are two things that could change this equation a lot. One would be the availability of a Windows 8 version of this device, right? That would get over the application compatibility hump. That, and so this will happen eventually, but it's not available now. And the other one is that cellular broadband stuff yeah. that I, I just, it's not necessarily something that everyone wants, but... I can't believe it's not an option. I mean, let, let me ask you. I'm very surprised at that, too. And I wonder if there was a reason for that uh, being battery life. I think the reason was simply that they're trying to keep the price down. I, I, I just, yeah. you know, someone in the uh, chat group says something about a USB port like this is how they're going to solve that. Um, there are no, to my knowledge, uh, basic drivers for cellular connectivity in Windows RT, I don't think. Um so I'm not really sure how that could be an option. You know, remember that people can't write uh, desktop applications yeah. for Windows RT. So I, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm just saying, you know, it's just really not an option yet. Obviously, people have tethering plans on their phones. They have, um, you know, the little mobile broadband uh, devices and so forth. So, you know, we'll, I'm sure it will happen. I, but again, the point is, on October 26th, the iPad is firmly established and Windows RT is not. I the Windows R Windows RT is a, you're taking a chance. And by the way, we had that big Apple announcement on the 23rd. Uh, I mean, it was strategically yeah, placed for that yeah, time, yeah. and they're going to release a tablet which will be well, probably cheaper than what this device is. 
Those aren't comparable though, right? Because, uh, you know, that iPad mini that's coming is obviously designed to compare or to compete with the, um, you know, Google Next 7. Yeah, but then why, the why do the Amazon. announcement now, you know? Uh, it, it, I think what this announcement was... Well, I mean, I think they should have waited. I mean, <laughs> what do you mean? No, I mean, it was, I mean, you could have done it a week prior. I think it was strategically done and I think it was done for the purpose of people because they're not just releasing an iPad mini, they're releasing... Uh, a Mac Mini, supposedly a i a new iMac, a Retina right. 13 inch. So this is to compete with Windows. Okay. I mean, I, I mean that's I, the, that's I, the sole purpose for this release to compete with Windows because I, I honestly think I don't see it. it way, but you don't see it. Well, yeah. you know, I'll tell you where I'll tell you where they're going to compete when someone walks into a store or they're considering buying a new computer. You you see these Lenovo devices which you posted on winsuperside.com. They have some unbelievably unbelievably cool Lenovo devices that are going to be these hybrid devices. One flips, one comes off, you know, the yoga, which uh, I forgot the touch one. Yep. And they're priced about the same price as an I, as an I, um, a Mac book pro. Yeah. You know, between seven ninety nine and let's say uh, 12, 1300 bucks. Okay. And you might want to go get that. And Apple's now saying, well, that's going to take a sale away from us. Cause that's our price range. Why not release something, you know, why not release a Retina Display MacBook Pro and, you know, try to grab as much as we can? I found it very interesting that they released it now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you don't think I don't, so? I don't think so. But Do you think okay. they, they had planned this date for a while? And I don't know this exact date, but it was, you know, for some reason, the iPad mini was always going to be October. It, you know, that I think was always the case. I'm not really sure why, but, you know. I don't, you know, the iPad mini, I don't care quite as much about it. Again, like I, this is an Amazon Kindle Fire HD competitor. This is a Google Nexus 7. The, the, you know, the, the RT device, the Surface RT device is this kind of hybrid thing. It's, it bridges the gap between, you know, what we would purely, uh, purely call a, uh, a media tablet and what we would call like a real computer. You know, it's right in the middle. And so it's interesting and we'll see. But I, I think another aspect of the price, though, is that had Microsoft really gone down in price to where I think they should have been, they really would have screwed over the, the partners, right? Yeah. The other hardware partners, because these guys can't sell these or won't sell their, their own devices for anything under these prices. You know, back in August, I had gotten a price list for all of the Windows RT devices that were planned at the time. Um, two of them actually got pulled out of the market. You might recall that uh, Toshiba decided not to release an RT device this fall because they couldn't get the components. Well, actually, Toshiba took, uh, decided that they're pulling the plug on a couple devices, right? It was yeah. like three or four devices that they yeah, and two Yeah, well, two of them were RT devices that they were going to release. And anyway, the, the point is that the, the price range for all of those devices was exactly the same price range you see for the iPad. It was $500 to $800. They were all in that range. And I remember when, uh, a couple, it was probably about a month later, there were rumors about, Microsoft selling the Surface for one ninety nine, which was insane. And I, I said that it's not possible. Yeah. It's just not possible. If these RT devices are all coming in at that price range, there's no way it's going to be that much cheaper. And I think you know, uh, obviously, I'm sure the goal is to make money on it and everything. But I look at our, this Surface RT or Surface in general as an aspirational device for this new market of. Windows 8 and Windows RT devices and PCs, that people will see the ads for this device, get really excited about what's happening. And go into the store and buy anyone. And maybe they buy a Lenovo or an yeah. Acer or whatever because, you know, well, this one's Intel compatible and I can run my apps on it or it's a little less expensive or it has more storage or whatever the... So that, that was actually my next question to you and I'm sure many of our viewers have the same question is if you have the option of buying the Surface, which is the <coughs> Microsoft device, you know, this, this device is made for the software. Yeah. Or you could go and buy a Lenovo or a Toshiba. Why are you going to get the Lenovo or Toshiba compared to the Surface? Right now, I mean, let's say the, the playing field is even. Well, you'd have to compare them on specs and uh, I mean, they're fairly, they're fairly the same, right? They're all the same. They're all, well, by the way, you're seeing it's, it's actually very interesting. I think this is on purpose, too, that th there's a very standard set of hardware components you see in all these ARM devices. Yeah. They're always 32 or 64 gigs of storage. It's always Tegra 3. It's always two gigs of RAM, by the way. Um, USB 2, not USB 3. That's apparently a limitation of ARM, I guess, today. Um, the, the expansion set that you see is fairly standard across these. It's, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's, the, same, it's the same thing. 
And um, the only thing that's really going to change is display size and battery life, really. Yeah, and you could play with the form factors. You know, yeah. you're going to see some uh, some people will do what looks like a normal ultrabook, but the screen pops up and it's a tablet. You know, that's not how Microsoft's doing the Surface, right? The the Surface keyboard cover is a very unique design that Microsoft has. It's it, it is a a differentiator. But, you know, for people like me, the truth is, I'm, I'm going to you know we're all excited about the Surface, but I'll get this thing and. Neither of these keyboard covers may work well for me because typing for me is job one. And if that's the case, then I pretty much can't use this device yeah. as a computer. You know, um, For other people who don't type as much as I do, which is like everybody, uh, maybe that's not an issue. So you, you know, everyone's needs are a little different. I mean, it's, it's going to depend. You know, uh, I'll, I'll give uh, you one example, Paul. My yeah. father uh, wants to get back into computers. Uh, he hasn't used a computer in like 20 years. <laughs> and uh, I 20 years literally 20 I mean when we got the Tandy when I was a kid oh, wow. that's what he was using and he was pretty active on it I was very surprised and uh, a couple of years ago I got him a laptop and he started using it and he started you know doing email and he started going on YouTube but I felt that he would mess things up way too much and it got really difficult and I think he got frustrated because he would open up the browser and he would go to the wrong website and then it would freeze it was a whole thing Sure. He came to me last week and he goes, you know, I want to buy a computer. Um, I want to spend about 500 bucks. And, I, and I'm, I'm tempted. I was really tempted to tell him, oh, look, get an iPad. Right. Or I could get this device for him. Though I, by the way, you know, I, obviously I understand why people buy iPads. But one of the tragic things that happens with an iPad is that a lot of people, I think, get this and assume they're going to use this instead of a computer. And for some things you can. But then they start decking it out, right? There's no one on earth probably who owns an iPad without a cover of some kind. And so there's an additional purchase. And they can buy like a stand or a keyboard stand or a dock with a separate keyboard or, you know, there's all this like stuff that you can buy for it. And over time, what you're doing is turning this thing into what is today, at least, again, they could fix this with software, but today, a pretty bad replacement for a laptop. Yeah, a really dumb laptop. Yeah, and I think that this is why the Surface... And other devices like it could take off in the market where there, there's just this group of people that they're kind of between, you know, they're tweeners or whatever. They need more than just a, uh, a media tablet, yeah. but they need less than the complexity of a full computer, you know? Yeah. And our team may uh, solve this problem, assuming that is a problem. I, guess. I think, listen, I think uh, this is going to be a huge holiday seller. I think this is going to be humongous. Uh, you know, the Xbox, you know, it's, by the way, it's a beautiful machine, yeah. a beautiful looking machine, I should say. I mean, the Xbox um, has gotten a little long in the tooth and, uh, you know, that's the holiday device for Microsoft up until yeah. now. And I think this is going to be the holiday device every year. They'll release I a was, new surface. Uh, I, this morning I was, I'll have to bring up the actual page, but I was, I was scrolling through one of the surface pages that Microsoft has on this. Of course, now the site has changed, but my daughter was walking in to say goodbye because she was going to school and she says, she saw it was a picture of the surface where you have that kind of keyboard on it. She says, Oh, that's what, what is that awful looking keyboard? You know, she thought it was an iPad. Yeah. And I said, uh, this is not, it's, it's a, it's a cover. It, you know, flips over and she's like, eh. And I'm like, Oh, I said, look, it's got this. And we, I was kind of, kind of scrolling down. Like there's another picture. And she's like, eh. And I'm like, but these covers come in different colors. And she was like, Ooh, <laughs> like yeah, that to her was like a big thing. Now, obviously you can get different color accessories, right? For yeah. Uh, an iPad or you know, different color covers and so forth. But um, it was funny that that's what did it for her because she was like, yeah, iPad, eh, oh, color covers, cool. You know? Now, with um, the pricing being four ninety nine, right, it's pretty close yeah. to what the, what the OEMs are doing. I mean, there's no – there's. I initially thought we would see this drastic uh, price increase from the Surface yeah. to, let's say, a Lenovo or a Dell or whatever. But, I mean, they're kind of in the same category. It might be a little bit more, but it seems like you're getting a little bit more with – Let's say Lenovo. I'm trying to find the post you made on Win Super Site for mm -hmm. the Lenovo, Lenovo devices because I'm really impressed by these. And um, yeah, so right, so they have various idea pads like the Yoga we knew about, and then there's some interesting new ones. You know, there's a uh, the ThinkPad is the least interesting, sadly. The ThinkPad Twist. You know, here we go. Let me um, go. It's okay looking. So but, here, here they are. Right, this is these are yeah. the uh, devices. So this so, one is the ThinkPad. The, no, the yoga pad, the idea pad yoga 13. <laughs> yeah. And so what's interesting about that one to me is now that they've kind of implemented it as it's going to be sold, 
what it looks like is an IdeaPad U class, you know, their Ultrabook. It looks just like their regular Ultrabooks, right? And it that's actually kind of cool because if you like that styling, and I'm okay with it, I'm not, you know, it's not my favorite, but um, you know, this gives you this computer that could be a laptop, but then can switch around and be this kind of cool tablet. Yeah. And you could the way it's sitting like that backwards, you know, you could picture it's on a you're on a plane, you're watching a movie, you know, it works all by itself. And then you have the 11 inch, which is a smaller version of it. Yeah, that smaller, arrives. Same thing, same styling. Same you know, styling. Nice. Yep. And then you have the the links. Yeah, and this is the pure tablet, right? This is the yeah. This so this is the one that has the clip on keyboard base, right? Now, is this so, Intel or is this uh, still? Um, this one ARM. is Intel. It's the Atom, you know, the yeah. Atom. So, and remember, this new Atom is like Intel's version of ARM in, as far as power management and all that stuff. Now, the thing I don't like about this one is the keyboard base. I actually think that looks kind of crappy, but it's a it start, gives you Paul. that dual use. You know, again, it's the and the pricing the isn't bad, five ninety nine. Yeah, and the battery life on this one's killer because the base has a separate battery. So if I'm not mistaken, that one gets eight hours of battery life, just the tablet, but 16 when you add the base. Yeah, and then you have the twist, which is just the ThinkPad with... Um, yeah, this, with the old-fashioned yeah. style, the, you know, the, the standard convertible laptop. But again, pricing not bad, 849 for that. I, if you compare yeah, they're it to, all right. If right. you compare it to what they were prior to you know, being touchscreen, it's almost the same price. Yeah, they're not bad. I mean, it's not bad at all. So I think these are going to be the, so, the, the devices. Well, obviously, yeah. So the Surface, what you get, you're, A, this is, uh, you know, like the BMW of the, uh, you know, the Windows 8 slash RT world. It's like, the, you know, the really nice design, high quality materials. It's obviously all about the user experience, you know. Um, we'll see. We'll see how they do. I mean, I'm, again, I need to use one. Uh, we'll see. You, know. you haven't played around with one yet? No, I've not even touched one. Paul Therat has not gotten some secret nope. special and By the way, edition. people have. I have not. That's disappointing. Yeah. I'm a little too critical. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's the problem. Sorry for being honest. Yeah. Sorry uh, for being honest. I yeah. saw something today that I, I, I really... It, it's so disappointing to see. You remember Dell put out that weird flip Windows 7 tablet? Yep. They and have another one. So, you it's know. the same thing, and it's the same yeah. exact problem. There's it, this yeah. bezel. Right, and for people who don't know what this is, it's, it's a it's, it's a netbook, it's, it's a netbook hybrid tablet, and the screen, right. let's say it's whatever nine inches, and then there's the bezel, and the screen flips. So when you shut the 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 case, the screen is up top. It's terrible. But the biggest problem with this is that the screen and the bezel don't fit perfectly. Yeah, so it spins around in the middle. It spins around the middle. You could so spin it. You could spin it, and if you're just sitting and using it, you could see directly behind the other you know you could see through the monitor because the bezel doesn't fit properly i hate it once so, again they, uh, they release the same thing we're clear, yeah it's awful i'm never going to go near that one so almost exactly two years ago uh, was when the first version of that one came out the, the original version or maybe it was three years ago but i bought it uh, basically because so many people wrote in and said you got to review this thing i want to i want to know about it. so i bought one and uh the battery life was abysmal the performance was terrible the screen issue you're talking about was absolutely present. You can see the light around the camera. Yeah. And I, I, it is one of the rare examples um, where I was like, I'm not reviewing this. This is awful. And I just sent it back. Terrible. It was that bad. So I see this new one and I think to myself, I don't care how good this is. In other words, if they fix the performance and the battery life, obviously it's running Windows 8, whatever. No, I'm not doing it again. I don't trust them. I, it's, it's a terrible design. I cannot believe they're doing it again. But there it is. And that's the problem with the OEMs. You know, and, and I feel that that and I keep saying, you know, yeah. the, the life of Windows 8 and the future of, of how successful this device is going to be is in the hands of the OEMs. And if the OEMs are using crappy hardware on these things. Well, it's not just though it's obviously yeah, hardware. Yes. Um, and not just the hardware, though, because the other issue is the software. Right. Um, you know, there are people trying to make this big, you know, like a series of articles about all the crapware that's going to be on Windows 8 PCs. Allow me to cut right to the chase. Windows 8 PCs are going to have an amazing amount of crapper on them. This is no way around it. I've already heard from my sources at Microsoft that when Microsoft got their first batch of computers in from their partners, they almost, I almost said shit a brick. Maybe that's the wrong term. Really? You know, for a more professional way of saying that. They were very upset with the fact that these guys are just loading up Windows 8 with crap. Like they have not gotten the memo. Well, Samsung said that they're adding a start menu. Oh, yeah. Just absolute worthless software utilities. Terrible. And they also have this ability to, I don't remember the exact number, but somebody had emailed me uh, the specification that these guys have where they can 
put a certain number of tiles on the start screen and they're just loading them up, you know, with all this junk, like orders, like it's, uh. you know, we can order like the full version of the app and yeah. it's just terrible. And so aside from uh, obviously the Microsoft hardware that they're making, I would remind people that Microsoft has a signature program. And I'm going to be very curious to see how they adapt this to Windows 8 because what you're going to be able to do then as now is buy a, 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 a computer from Microsoft that is made by Dell or HP or Samsung or Lenovo or whatever, but it's got Microsoft software image on it, not theirs. And, you know, when I bought my PC at the Microsoft store opening in Boston here a couple months ago, um, I got it, obviously got the signature PC. And I recently restored it back to the factory image. And one of the, uh, they oh, weren't doing this a couple of years ago, but you know what they do now is that when you use the, in this case, a Samsung utility to restore it, it restores the Microsoft image. They've actually pushed their own image into the restore partition as well. So even though you're using a Samsung utility, when you're done, you get the you know you get the the signature one. Real, I didn't, so well, you know what they've also asking, done. I I I recently totally blew away um, an Acer. Yeah, and it was filled with crap. So I went to I guess whatever recovery mode that they have, and it gives you the option of what you want to install on it. And I found that fascinating. I've never seen anybody else do it. So it says I, like, know, hey, do you want our from crap? Time to time. Yeah. It's yeah. like, do you want our crap? Do you want our games? Do you yeah, want... Lenovo, uh, one of the Lenovo PCs I have has like a two disc set. So the first disc is Windows and, and the right drivers. And then the second disc is what you're describing where you can kind of say, yeah, I want this utility. I want this. And, you know, Lenovo doesn't tend to put crapware in the traditional sense. They, they certainly have their own utilities, but... But they're pretty good with it. Yeah, yeah. they're generally pretty good. Um, <coughs> I just wanted to address a couple of questions from the chat room, if I could. Go uh, right ahead, Paul. One was about the PC reset and pre PC refresh and whether OEMs like PC makers could muck around with this. And yeah, actually, the answer is yes. It, these things are designed to be modifiable by the PC maker. So they, they can be customized to that end. So in other words, you could do like a PC reset. And so a factory refresh of a, let's say, an HP PC will include the HP utilities that are on there as well, or can, right? Yeah. Um, if you are a power user, this is something I'm going to look into writing up. I mean, you can actually run PC reset or refresh from the command line and actually specify what bits get returned, right, in a much more fine-grained way than you can in the normal UI. So there's that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention uh, based on what people are asking here is, and not about which one is my favorite color, is about the performance of Windows RT. And uh, in, in New Zealand, I had uh, a few devices I was able to play with, um, some of which were very interesting. Um, but the, with Windows RT, uh, we plugged a bunch of different keyboards and mice into it. We used Bluetooth keyboards and mice. That stuff all worked. The system performance, it was 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gig. Uh, I think it's called EMMC storage. Uh, it was fantastic. It was in, it was indiscernible, I guess would be the way to say it from Windows 8. So it looks and works and is Windows 8. It's Windows 8. You know, there's no you don't really notice a difference. So, like I said, you know, we see a lot of standard two gigs of RAM. You know, on these Windows RT systems, it just you would never really want to run yeah. with two two gigs of RAM on a Windows eight PC, but it works it works great in Windows RT. Very cool, Paul. We have a lot to get to. Of course, uh, we're talking about Windows RT Surface. Uh, the pricing was announced. Pre orders started at noon East today. Uh, I want to run through some of the specs for Windows RT uh, that we finally got a list of, mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, the Apple announcement for October twenty uh, third, three days prior to the launch. Uh, but I do want to talk about something uh we are nominated or or we are in the race to for best tech show for the stitcher awards paul i don't know if you know that <laughs> i do know that because People, you're constantly harping on it now. i am because you know <laughs> I, I really do this but i got a lot of people like hey i voted for you i'm like hey you know what let's try why not yeah uh so we're in the running uh, all you need to do, actually, if you're watching on gfqlive.tv right now, you could just click on the little banner on the bottom that says nominate best tech show. Uh, you could click on and vote. You could vote every day uh, and uh, you could vote for us in the tech section. You could just put in what the tech and you can vote for us or you could go to uh, stitcher.com forward slash stitcher awards. 
That's Stitcher.com slash Stitcher Awards. We are uh, in the race, Paul. And for once, I'll be a winner. Considering I'm from Queens and we never win anything here. We're we're just bred to be losers. Like our, our amazing Mets. Just disappointment <laughs> after disappointment for us. So uh, change the life of a kid from Queens. How about that? Uh, that's uh, Stitcher.com slash Stitcher Awards. You can vote. And you can vote for other shows, too. If you like any other podcast, you know, vote for them, too. But not in the tech section. Vote for us. Uh, I just have to sit in that poll. People last week, I got emails. They're like, hey, you spoke about it. You didn't give us a URL. So here's the URL. And uh, I'll be bombarding you with n- nonsense for the rest of the... Uh, I think there's three days of voting left, so... I'll be posting a lot of stuff. So, Paul, I, I had a question. Actually, a viewer had this question, but I have it too. Mm-hmm. Now, with these specs for Windows RT, how yeah. are they going to change within the year? Right. Six mo- from, months from now, are they going to change the specs all over again? I would think so. You know, obviously, the ARM platform is evolving too, right? I think ARM is 32-bit, right? So, four gigs of RAM today is the, the maximum you're going to see. But, I mean, uh, you know, we'll have to see how it's not just the Surface or our... Windows RT or even ARM, it's this whole market for these kind of tablets, right? You know, how how does the iPad evolve? I remember when the first iPad came out and the memory allotments were probably, you know, 16, 32, and 64 gig. I thought, well, in a year or two, we're going to have 128 gig and 256 gig. But the truth is we don't, you know, obviously that's never happened. And one of the reasons is that we now have, you know, more pervasive connectivity. We have lots of cloud storage and, you know, things are changing on the periphery. So, it's not just raw hardware changes that can and, and probably will occur, but um, it's you know, the other outside forces that also affect these things. And so, we'll, you know, we'll see. In other words, yeah. Microsoft will sell us a line of Surface computers next Christmas. Will they be different? Is that basically Yeah. Right? Yeah, probably. I mean, but like I said, I mean, right now, you know, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, or 64 gigs of storage. Uh, Windows RT works great. I'd love to see a version that had broadband, uh, you know, cellular broadband. What I'm really surprised is that we haven't seen a big push come from, I mean, Lenovo's kind of pushing it, but I haven't seen anything from HP. I mean, I've seen some stuff, but they haven't really been pushing it. HP, Dell, Gateway. I mean, there hasn't been this huge push for these devices. For, well, uh, HP has said they're not going to make an RT device. Not, not, uh, not just the RT. I mean, just Windows 8 devices. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 all happening. I mean, I, I, all of the major PC makers now have announced stuff, all of them, you know. And it's funny because, as we've discussed in the past, that's a different world than it used to be. It's not HP and Dell anymore, although they're obviously still in there. It's Lenovo, Acer, Asus, uh, Samsung. You know, there's a lot of different players. But all, all of these guys have announced Windows 8 and, in some cases, Windows RT devices, too. Yeah, I'm I'm very surprised that... I haven't seen as much as I had, you know, uh, we did with Windows 7 when a lot of these uh, devices were coming out around the same time as the launch. I- I'm just, I'm thinking, is it the fact that a lot of these OEMs don't know if their devices are going to sell as well? I-, I mean, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I-, I mean, are they are they scared that Windows 8 sales might not be what they want? I think there are a million issues here, but the the two big ones in my mind are, yes, definitely a confusion over which device type or types are going to take off the most, right? You know, like we talked in the past, you know, laptop, desktop used to be the world. Now it's five, six, seven, eight different kinds of machines. Um, you don't want to spend a lot of money investing in and, and producing the device that nobody buys, you know? And so I think there's some some worry there. The other one, though, is, you know, especially with Windows RT, when you look at the ARM world, uh, there are rumors that Microsoft actually denied to certain very high-profile PC companies the ability to even sell an RT device, the rationale being that you make PCs and you don't get this world. Yeah. You, know, you don't make ARM devices, thus you're not going to be able to do a good job because, you know, Windows RT is a much closer synthesis between the hardware and the software than is the case on, on Windows, which is designed to run on this very diverse array of, you know, components and PC types. You know, as we've seen, the, the RT devices tend to be very, very similar, almost identical from a hardware perspective. So I think companies that were on the periphery of the PC world in the past are suddenly in a much better position to compete with these yeah. other companies now because they're, they actually have been making ARM devices for a long time. 
I'm looking, uh, I'm trying to see who else has some devices coming out. And, and it's all Lenovo. I mean, Samsung showed off some of the stuff that they're doing. Oh, Samsung is taking pre orders also right now. Are they? Yeah, Samsung starts taking pre orders. Yeah, I have the, to say, um, I, you know, I've had really good, dev uh, really good experiences with Samsung phones. I've had really good experiences with the Samsung Ultrabooks. You know, I, th there's a case to be made uh, that they that wouldn't be a bad choice, you know. The Ativ. Uh, and Samsung, but Samsung will be loading it with a bunch of Samsung stuff on here. Oh, yeah. They made it very clear <laughs> that they're going to be yeah. loading it with a bunch of stuff yeah, for Samsung. Know, yep. Um, so where, where do you go to where do you go to pre-order Samsung stuff? Is that I'm going to go to their website right now and see Samsung. Oh, good luck on Samsung's website. That's one of the problems. Oh, it's awful. Samsung, you know, one of the things. So I just talked about how great Samsung was. One of the negative sides to Samsung is, is that website? I bought a number of Samsung products. So I get Samsung emails, e like promotional emails, right? A lot of times there'll be like a new Samsung phone, a new Samsung computer. I've gotten two uh, emails this week about Samsung uh, uh Clothes washers or dishwashers, I don't remember, one of the two. Some kind of bizarre product that has nothing to do with the stuff that I bought from them. And it's like, okay, so they obviously have a diverse lineup of devices and that's nice, but I don't really, you know, like I don't really care about that stuff. It's kind of a strange they put out, a, They put out a dish. press release, Paul, and I don't see the yeah, devices anywhere. You might not be able to pre order it on their site. So where do you pre order Best Buy? Probably Best Buy, yeah, because Best Buy is doing um, Windows 8 PC pre-orders. Okay, yeah, okay, so Windows 8 pre-orders, here we go. So you could pre-order. Yeah, so Samsung has eight devices, most of which are your standard laptops. Okay, a bunch of HP, you know, stuff, yeah. uh, laptops. So let's uh, actually, so the way to do this would be, can you just fine-tune it to tablets or let's not? Look. No. So here are all the pre-orders you could do. Let me see for tablet. Yeah, but you can't really, you know, you can do it by um, like okay. brands. But what I would like to do it by is. I don't see any tablets. The type. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, they're, they've, they've got to be some. Yeah. Laptop, netbook, desktop. No, it's but all these laptop. Are all and the standard looking PCs, aren't they? Yeah. Not it's very exciting. I'm sure Gateway's got some great stuff coming out. Let me just spend some time on that. <laughs> yeah. I say this is, but this is the problem with the OEMs, and that's why Microsoft had to make their own device. Yep, there's a lot of weird stuff around yeah. Windows 8, you know, isn't there? I mean, think about it. Like, as, here we are. It's about uh, what let, ten days until launch. You know, you can pre-order Windows 8 Professional. You can pre-order Windows 8 Pro Pack, which is a way to upgrade from Windows 8 Core to Pro Plus Media Center. You can't pre-order Windows 8 Core. <laughs> like, you can only pre-order the high-end version. You know. Uh, I'm, I'm confused by this. Like, I, I there's a lot of questions like that I have, and you know that you know why can I only pre-order like what appears to be tower computers and laptops, but not tablets or hybrid devices? There's got to be something. There's got to be something. Yeah, I, it's got to be a, yeah. a, 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 a a scramble this holiday season with these devices. Yeah, I mean it's going to be it's going to be pretty nutty on how they're going to market this and how they're going to sell it. Um, well, the Surface isn't in Best Buy, so I mean that that's the plus for these. Well, guys. The Surface is nowhere, but nowhere. Microsoft but, yeah. store for now, yeah, for now. And I think I think that's the advantage that the OEMs have. But I'm I'm really curious to know who's going to go wait online to buy Windows 8 and these devices on the release day. Because I'll tell you, Windows 7. That when I went to go buy Windows 7 on the day that it came out, and the reason why I went is because they refused Best Buy refused to sell me a laptop. Five days before they took yeah. they were not selling any computers. You cannot buy a computer from Best Buy. <laughs> and I, I'm like, I don't want because they have to <coughs> load everything with Windows 7. So they they just stopped selling. And I thought that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And I kept telling the guy, I'm like, so you're telling me you cannot sell any computers right now. They go, no. I'm like, I don't want to take it off. Give me Windows XP. I just need a computer. I needed it as an emergency. They refused to sell me a computer. <laughs> Yeah, but when I went to go buy, um, you know, the laptop the day that it came out, there was a line actually in front of Best Buy. Everyone was dying to buy the new computers, I guess. Or what they did, they did this uh, this weird false, you know, line where they told everybody they have to come back on that day to buy the computer, so they could be like, "Look at the line we got on this day." Hmm. You know, I thought that was actually interesting. So, which I don't know, this, I don't wonder. I wonder what this is going to be like. You know. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if there's, it's not going to be Windows ninety five. We know that for sure. Or maybe we don't. Maybe I don't it's know. You know I don't know. I, it's I don't know. You know, I the the Windows eight ads I've seen are good. The Surface ad was good. Um, I I think they're doing a decent job of branding. You know what they're doing. So. I don't know. We'll see. So they apparently the Microsoft store in Seattle is not doing the midnight launch. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Which device are you most excited for except for the Surface? Or maybe you're not excited for the Surface because you said you're not that crazy about the pricing structure. Uh, the one that I like the most so far, which I also got to play with in New Zealand, was an Acer Iconia. I want to say it was a W700. It's probably seven hundred and fifty dollars, so it's not cheap. But it is Intel compat, you know, Intel chipset. It's really thin and light, and gets good battery life. You know, eight hourish battery life. Um, probably, I think, what, I think eleven, ten point six or eleven inch screen somewhere in there. And if look, let me look it up. Iconia. I'm looking at W seven, right? W seven hundred. It's white. It's yeah. really nice looking. It just has that kind of nice, elegant look to it, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was nice. I had the video up. Is this the one? Yeah, that's it. So the one thing I don't like about it is that weird dock thing you can see in the background. It's got that kind of L-shaped bezel that it kind of slides into. Yeah. That makes it look bulkier and weird. I, I kind of wish there was a different dock option, but the, the tablet itself is it's, it's really beautiful. It's, it's, a, big, just, it's a big device. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it looks... looks it didn't, wasn't that big one. <laughs> Maybe I'm just bigger. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the is video. Is this a midget using this? I, I don't, don't know. know. It looks it looks it wasn't huge. that big. Um, let me see if we can if I can find out how big the screen is. It is an 11.6 inch slate. It has a by the way a 1080p display. Uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, it's about it starts at 750 bucks. So uh, it is more expensive than a Surface, you know. But it's a PC, right? It's yeah, a full PC. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm concerned on, I'm still concerned on how people are going to perceive this when they go to buy an RT device. Are they going to know they're not getting Windows 8? They're getting Windows RT. Uh, this is the never ending problem. And, and they, Microsoft has not done a great job at separating the two, in my opinion. Yep. Especially in their commercial. So if you're right. looking at the commercial, if you saw that commercial, you would think it's the same thing. I mean, it's just Windows 8. <coughs> well, you're Windows. talking about the Surface commercial. Yeah. So if you're looking at that commercial, you're buying the device, right? You're not really getting Windows, right? It's like you're buying Surface. You know, it seemed to me that that's how they were sort of selling it. Like this is a new thing. We're we're selling this to people who are trendy and hip and would like you know buy an iPad normally. But oh, look at this cool thing with a keyboard cover. You know, yeah. they're very taken with the sound, that kind of clack sound that it makes. You know, when you clip in the keyboard, the, you know, yeah, the magnet. They love that. You know. I don't know. I, I don't know how they... I, I'm just... I'm thinking it, it's either going to be this huge thing or it's going to be this huge disaster. People are going to go and they're like, I can't run Norton on this. I can't I run look QuickBooks. At that as a benefit, you know, yeah, personal. like it's going to be like, I can't use QuickBooks. So I'm, I'm writing the, the fourth part of my Windows 8 review right now and it's about productivity apps and productivity in general and in Windows 8. And, you know, one of the big arguments against Windows 8 is that these new apps basically run full screen only. Obviously, they have that kind of snap mode, which is mostly terrible. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a big screen. I talk about this all the time. You know, I can run apps side by side. The truth is, if you're really being honest with yourself, I mean, most people, I don't think, actually run lots of apps side by side all the time. I, I, obviously, some people do. I literally am right now because I've got the video window open on one side and I've got our show notes on the other side. So how many, how many applications are you running right now? On your screen. So it's hard to say because they're all tabbed up. Yeah. But it's like one, two, three, four. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I've got eight browser tabs. So, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, you know, a lot, you know, whatever. But, you know, most of them aren't doing anything. They're just kind of sitting there in the background or whatever. But the truth is, you know, and again, everyone does different stuff. I can't put myself in everyone's shoes. But, you know, I'm writing an article. I'm referencing a website or a press release that some company put out or an email message or whatever it is. I don't actually honestly ever have them side by side i i flip back and forth i use yeah. the keyboard shortcut you know um would it be possible to do that kind of activity if those things were literally full screen all the time you know yeah probably would be 
you know, and the metro environment has mechanisms for updating you when things change. So if you're on the lock screen, if you're not even using it, obviously you get the little notifications there. If you're on the start screen, you get the live tiles that update it in real time. And if you're on the desktop or in any one app, notifications slide in from the corner and then you know that something has happened. So today I can look down at my taskbar and I know I have a new email because there's a little number one sitting there on the icon for the application. But, you know, in the Metro world, I could be talking to you over Skype, you know, the Metro version of Skype, full screen, and a little window would have slid in and said, not only, that, not only would I know that I have an email, but it would give me the name of the person who emailed me and the first line or two of the email would be in the notification. It's a different way of multitasking. It's not necessarily an inferior way. Yeah. You know? And so I, 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 we're all, there's all this angst about this change, but I honestly think that once some key apps occur on the Metro side, you know, Photoshop, iTunes, um, I don't know, whatever, you know, whatever, who knows what people actually use in the real world, whatever it is, um, you know, maybe these concerns go away. I feel the biggest fear that people have is that they're not going to have access to the back end anymore. You know, but who, it, needs, it, but who needs access to that? Yeah, I mean, we, we I think it's because we're used to it. You know, we, we've been doing it for so long that we're, you <laughs> well, know, yeah, we're always in five. You're always in Windows Explorer, for example. You always have I always have it open. Sure. Because I'm trying to open up files like that. Yeah, but, you know, that's going away. <laughs> Uh, right. I mean, Microsoft, you know, people forget this. Microsoft has been trying to get people away from that mode of computing since 1995. You know, if you were to go back and look at the original documentation and the, the press stuff about Windows 95, the, one of the advantages, supposedly, of this new UI, this desktop UI with the start menu and everything, was a document-centric user interface is what they called it. The idea was that Rather than opening a file manager window or an explorer window and navigating down to where your document was, you could access the document name from the start menu. And then the appropriate application would just run. And that you never had to think about finding the app or finding the document. Like these things would just be available to you. Yeah. You know, that you, you know, and so a lot of what we do on a computer is basically tradition, which we no longer remember why we do it that way we just are used to doing it that way and it doesn't mean it's the best or most efficient way of doing it it's just the it's just what we're doing and it, you know i think there are people like my kids or, or younger people who might sit over your shoulder and look at what you're doing would be like what are you why are you because i do the same thing i open explorer windows all day long yeah i have going, like 15 of them uh, all open. day long yeah oh yeah i make folders i make subfolders i organize things i'm an idiot <laughs> i i do all that stuff you know no it's it's but it's 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 not necessarily efficient. It's just the way we do it. It's just it. the way that we do it and we're used to it. And I think yeah. that's the biggest problem that people are, are facing. It's not yeah. it's not that Windows 8 is not efficient. It's just that it, it's it's that we have to relearn this. And if you've been using yeah. you, you know Windows since Windows 95, you're kind of used to these shortcuts and these certain things that you do. Now you got to relearn it. You ever do you, have you ever ridden in a hot air balloon? No, never have and never will. You should do it. Terrified of them. No, no, here's why. It's not scary in the slightest. In fact, it feels very natural. It feels awesome. It's an incredible thing. Like when you do this, you realize that every time you get in a plane, it's like you are breaking every law of physics imaginable that this plane is pushing through the air and some horrific explosion of activity yeah. to get this hunk of metal into the sky. Thanks for thanks Whereas, for reminding me. <laughs> well, whereas a hot air balloon is like you cut the rope and you slowly glide away. It's it's very nice and natural. And so obviously a jet airplane is going to get you there faster. It's not a, an awesome analogy. But I mean, you know, Windows, uh, the Metro thing in many ways is like that hot air balloon. It's simpler. It's, you know, borderline retarded, you know, compared to a, the complexity of an airplane or whatever. Yeah. But it's, and I'm not saying it's better, but it's it's a different way of doing things. And, you know, honestly, on a touch device, especially, I think when you get used to it, it becomes very natural. And there will, co there will come a day, uh, someday in the future, where, you know, we're going to look back and be like, man, I can't believe we spent time on the command line. I can't believe all the stuff we did, you know, managing files and, and doing all this stuff. You know, th there's no file manager in Metro. You have to understand, that was a very conscious decision not to offer that. You know, it would have been easy for them 
to have made a Metro Explorer. But what are you looking for exactly? If I know. You have what's it, the you point? Know, that, that's, you know, the that's the whole thing. thing. Right. What are you doing? When you're, when you're using an iPhone or an iPad, do you ever think about where the data is that you're accessing? In a, even if you are writing uh, like a word processing document in some app on an iPad, do you really ever think about where it is? No, I mean, you, it, it's you know, all there. I mean, right. it's all there. And you, if you need to share it, you hit the share button. That's how you do it. Um, yep. Even even in iTunes, for example, uh, I've been cataloging my, my MP3s all over again. And I found this pretty cool application called uh, TuneUp. I think it's like 39 bucks and it does the best job at ID3 tagging. And I know Paul's obsessed with this and he's gone through his entire library. Oh, see, you tag. understand how this is also this is part of the same problem. This is part saying. of the same exact problem. So you know, I, I'm. What, you could just, would you use like Pandora and shut up about your stupid MP3? I know. Things? I know. No, I, I mean, think that too. No, you know I, mean? I think like, that all the time. It, I, I, I actually, I got so, yeah. I got so aggravated. I was just thinking about deleting it all and just using everything right. on the cloud. You know, use Pandora. Use yep. Spotify, and I'm sure I'll have access to everything, and I won't miss these files that I have, you know, stored. I'm, I'm, I'm collecting these MP3s that I'll never listen to ever we're, again. We're, we're the lost generation because yeah. I'll never listen we know to the Gypsy too much Kings. about these things, and we are too used to doing things. I have the best of the Gypsy Kings album. When am I ever going to listen to this? <laughs> right. I have like four uh, four different Gypsy King albums. I don't know why. I don't even know who when I downloaded this thing, but I have it. Yeah. And I'm really no, concerned of, with ID3 tag. A lot of music tag. in my collection is like for the kids or, you know, my wife's music or whatever. And, you know, it's like it's like clicking around and finding a uh, like an, a little vanilla ice song come up yeah. or something. I'm trying to make up something terrible. You know, like, I mean, it's just like it's awful, you know. And like, what's the point of it? Why do I have these things? Yeah, I, Not only I think do I have too. them, but like you probably... I have migrated them from drive to drive to server. Yeah. To, you know, like I've copied them up to every cloud service on earth, you know, to spend days at a time on this kind of stuff. It's stupid. You know, it's, it's amazing how much time we spend spinning our wheels for technology. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing is I'll never listen to these things. I mean, that's a, that's a fact that it matter. I, I'm never going to listen to it. I just keep it here and I don't want to let go for whatever <coughs> reason. And because I've had these files for, you know, since 1999, so a lot of these things are, are not tagged, and I've and I've downloaded all these different tools to retag it. I I forgot what the main one for Windows was. I, I tried that. I've tried, you know, maybe I spent five hundred dollars on on software just to tag these, and a lot of the songs are still not tagged. I downloaded this TuneUp software it's for Windows and Mac, and I'll drag them, and they work. Oh man, they just work. So now I'm just sitting here retagging everything. But my point was in iTunes, and this kind of goes to what you were saying, uh, in iTunes, you could delete the MP3 from your computer. You don't have to go and find the directory it's in. I don't know if it's like that on the Windows version of iTunes, but you don't yeah, have no, to it's go. It's exactly like that, except it doesn't actually delete the file. It's, it doesn't. It's very insidious. Okay. So it's supposed, it's supposed to work like that. It's supposed yeah. to, but it doesn't. So, I mean, the truth is you don't need access to the back end for a lot of this stuff. We're not replacing, you know, exe files and and ini files anymore. Those days are gone. Tune up. So, it w what is the site for this? I'm going to look at. Okay, it. so I'm going to show you how it I works. Hate myself for this, by the way. So, thank you for that. Okay, so let me let me show you how this works. So let's go to my computer. Okay, so let's uh, let's find a song here. Random. Let's find Elton John, Blue, Gene Blue. You just drag it, you drop it. Oh, I'm not even doing that. Hold on. I'm, I don't even have it on. I feel like you now. I'm really confused. <laughs> um, <laughs> why isn't it Actual working? state. Okay, so let's go. Oh, that's not the button. That's not the button. There we go. All right, so let's take uh, the Beach Boys. Yeah, but where do I find this thing? Is it... Tune uh, up? Tu yeah. Just put in tune up, uh, in tune up iTunes. So yeah. you just take it, you drag it, and look, it found it. Found the album. Save all. Media. And there you go. It just does it that way. It, it's extremely simple. But the problem is you have to use iTunes. And you can't do it from the file. You know, you can't go into like Explorer and grab the file and, and put it in there. You have to use iTunes. So that's the only limitation. But why do you care if it's getting the job done? What difference does it make, right? Did you find it? Yep. Tune up MP3. <coughs> Let me see here. Me. I think yeah, it's tuneupmedia.com. That's the website. Yep. 
And you could try it for free. I mean, it's pretty good. It's not bad at all. Uh, Paul, before we wrap up, I want to talk about the uh, the Apple announcement next week. They're releasing all these updates now. We're going to get the iPad mini, yep. which uh, y- you think it's going to sell really well, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, as well as the original iPad? I wonder if they'll break that out. I don't. That's a good question. Um, uh, you know, I think that uh, in that market, it's going to be split pretty nicely between the Kindle line and the and the iPad Mini. I would say. Uh, you, do you feel it's going to affect Windows uh, RT sales? No, I don't think those things are comparable in any way. Shape. You think a totally separate. Uh, and and they're targeting yep. totally separate people. This is a giant iPod Touch is the way to think of it. This is not no yeah. one's going to be writing word processing documents on an iPad Mini. This is a it's a media device. This will be an awesome thing to bring with you when you travel, watch movies on. Uh, it's got all the cloud connectivity stuff. Great, uh, it's going to be great. There's no doubt about it. I I don't know, Paul. You know, I I, <laughs> I just said there's no doubt about it. Uh, okay, fine. Why if are you, you introducing so. doubt? <laughs> if you, if you say so. <laughs> Um, I, I'm just I, I, I'm a little concerned they're, they're, with it. Yeah. Okay. Well. So what's what's wrong? What, what's what's the potential issue? Here? I, I I actually think it's going to hurt iPad sales. I think it's going to hurt itself. Uh, yeah. I, you know the the problem is the iPad is being assailed from different sides of the market, right? That you've got uh, the Kindle Fire HD and the Nexus Seven to a smaller degree coming at it from the low end, and you've got you know now Windows RT eventually and these Windows Eight devices and other RT devices. Uh, coming at it from the high end. So I I think they have to do this because otherwise there's just a certain percentage of people that want to use the iPad just as a media device that can't justify that expense. And they look at, you know, the Kindle Fire HD is like 200 bucks. It's like a no-brainer. I had a- Whereas Apple comes in, I think that, what was the uh, projected price? Was it 350 For which one? For the iPad mini? Uh, I, think, I think it's going to be 399 I mean, that's my oh. guess because if you look at, oh the no, I thought they, they were. I thought this was leaked. I thought, I thought these prices came out. I never saw a price leak. Oh, maybe. Okay, maybe, well, maybe the if, chat room if, saw one. I, I think there is a, a point where it obviously it's going to have to be more than the Kindle and Nexus stuff. So, I think there's a point where they can justify the. You know, it's an it's Apple. You're buying into the ecosystem. You know, they're gonna they're gonna say, yeah, you could spend less on a tablet, but. This is going to be the better tablet, and I think they have a good case to make for that. Uh, I think this this is the iPad I always wanted. You know, ever since the original iPad came out, I've been talking about a smaller version. You know, okay, Something so, you can so you're right. And, there was a pro- there was a leak. Uh, what was the starting price? Uh, there was an eight gig Wi Fi model for three twenty. Three twenty. I mean, that's pretty competitive. Yeah, except eight gig. Eight, eight gigs is tough. You know. Eight gigs, uh, but I mean, if you're comparing it to an Android tablet, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a great way to get you in. But what I don't understand is I that Apple 40- could solve all their problems by doing a couple of things. You know, how about like expandable memory? But this thing is twenty dollars you know? more than the iPod Touch. That's yeah. why I don't think that pricing is going to happen. I I don't it think that pricing make makes sense at all. Yeah, because three fifty. 20- I think three ninety nine. Three ninety nine is too much. Three ninety nine is, you know, that's the I iPad th- too. No, I agree with. Uh, well, Too they much. might they what well, they might take the iPad two off the market and just make it the iPad and the new iPad. That's interesting. It'll totally eliminate the iPad two and say, okay, well, if you don't want to spend the money, then get the lower one, get the yeah, smaller if that device. Happens, there are going to be a bunch of people who are going to be like, you know what? I wish I could buy the iPad two right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because there, there's obviously some people do want the bigger screen. Um, uh, we'll see. I mean, I you know, obviously a lot of factors at play here. I mean, uh, the screen resolution, the and screen will it aspect be, ratio. Yeah, is it going to be widescreen? Yeah, is it going to be widescreen? That's the whole thing, too. Is we'll it going see. to be 69? Now, the other devices that they're releasing, uh, a 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina. Yeah, I don't care about that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, it's about time they upgraded the screen on this thing because it's extremely oh, low it's res. 1280 by 800. What a, it's awful. Awful. That's awful. That's like punishing people. It, it's actually, and you yeah. pointed this out, I didn't even know, it's lower resolution than the Air. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, they just haven't crazy. updated it's, this it's thing. It's never changed. There has yeah. to be a reason why they did that. They they really ride things for a while. Man. Yeah. I, I, that one I don't understand. There's no excuse for the screen on that not to have changed. But yeah, there it is. Uh, we're also going to get new IMAX, and people are saying, well, it might have a Retina. I do not see them putting you know a 27 inch Retina display on this device. Wait, what's Retina for 27 inch? It's like 
ninety six hundred by yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. I don't see that happening. <laughs> um, and yeah. a new uh, the a new uh, Mac Mini. Yeah, I don't Another get that one, one either. Are, are Mac Minis still like a thing? I mean, I, obviously they sell them, but I mean, you don't really hear. Yeah, you know what they're going to do? I'm telling you, they're going to put th- the reason why they're upgrading everything is to put Thunderbolt on there so they could push Thunderbolt. Okay. And to remove uh, optical drives. Yeah. Apple yeah. Apple does not want optical and they want to go SSD on everything or whatever yeah. they're calling. They're not calling it SSD. I forgot the, what they call it. I'll oh, just solid state. Solid, whatever they're calling it. Yeah. I, th- they're going to, and that's another reason for an upgrade. Maybe they could put a USB port on the front of that thing, you know, just a thought. Yeah. I, I don't know, know. I know it's all about the design and everything, but uh, interesting. You ever try to reach behind a Mac Mini to plug in something in the back of that thing? I, I refuse to buy one. That's terrible. I've never used one and I don't want it. I think it's a total. I waste own of one, money. but it's like the Core 2 Duo version, so it's like driving a jalopy. And before we wrap up, Paul, people want us yep. to talk about Xbox Music and the dashboard update. Yeah. We uh, we didn't get to it. So have so, you played around with it? Yeah. I mean, there's some confusion about when stuff goes live, you know, and, and supposedly Xbox Music was going live today. I don't quite understand what that means. I, I, I sort of figured it would mean that the Xbox Music app on Windows 8 would be updated. But um, it hasn't? No. And so as far as, you know things go i mean on I, i'm not even sure if I, can i talk about the xbox part of this i'm not sure if i'm, I'm uh it did it get released Some no people- uh no it's not coming out to november so I, I would just say generally okay. speaking that uh the xbox music advancements are part of this coming dashboard update that's coming in november and um some of this you know they've announced a lot of this so i mean obviously the, so, someone's saying the update is out today so um basically there, it's weird because if you think about the different places that you'll be able to access Xbox music from. It's not Xbox. Have, it, it's different. It, yeah. It's on every device. It's a little different. So there's Windows 8 with the, with the app, right? There's a Windows Phone, which has the old app, you know, the old uh, Music Plus Videos app. Windows Phone 8, which will have an updated version of it. The Xbox, right? And then eventually we're going to have, um, well, Windows 7 through the Zune client. And, uh, and eventually we're going to have the web and iOS and Android. And so these things all work a little differently. And so on the Xbox, one of the capabilities you don't get is downloading. Like you can't download stuff to the Xbox. It's, all, it's pure streaming. It's, there's also a little bit of an issue where on the Xbox, you have to have uh, two subscriptions to access the service, right? You have to have Xbox Live Gold, which is 60 bucks a year. Yeah. And then you have to have an Xbox Music Pass. To do the streaming, uh, which is because you don't, nine you bucks, don't participate right? in the free streaming on the Xbox, and how much, it's like nine ninety nine. It's ten bucks a month. Bucks so uh, I, I've been using. I mean, I use Xbox Music what? Pass. So I've had ex- I've had access to Zune Music Pass on the Xbox for years and but years. But you know, this is my biggest problem with this, Paul. I, I yep. don't like the fact that they're using the Xbox name on 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 all the platforms. Um, so it makes sense. Here's the thing. So. We, when you hear Xbox, you think of a video game. Console. And I think that that's the problem. I mean, I could identify Xbox as a entertainment device, and yeah. it's more than but, just gaming, but, but, but Xbox, most people can't. It's the only brand that Microsoft has that's popular with consumers. So they're recasting it as a, a general entertainment brand. The other thing is, it doesn't mean hardware to them. Xbox, obviously, they have Xbox hardware. Um, the Xbox, you know, we keep calling it the Xbox. It's really, you got to remember, it's not the Xbox. It's the Xbox 360. Um, Xbox is also a series of services, right? They have the marketplace back end. They sell apps. They sell uh, music and videos. And, you know, it, it's there's a bunch of stuff going on there. So, um, well, getting a little off track. But anyway. I mean, but they've, they've tried to they've tried to change a brand to it being an entertainment device rather than a gaming device. But is yeah. the consumer going to know? I mean, when you pick up, a Windows well, phone, and you see Xbox Music. This again, this is uh, the same kind of conversation we have about Windows Eight and the yeah. future computing. You know, you and I are coming at it from the tech industry, uh, from the pros- from the perspective of a normal consumer. Right now, more people are using an Xbox to do video and music services than they are to use play video games. So I hear you, and I agree with you. But I, actually, I think to the wider consumer, doesn't matter. It, it is already an entertainment yeah. brand. So. Yeah, the, the, they're going to hear that they can get Xbox on Windows and they're going to hear that they can get Xbox on Windows Phone. And to be honest, that's not an inaccurate point because there are Xbox Live games on both of those platforms now. There are There is Xbox Music and the, all of the services and there is Xbox Video and all those services. So actually, you know, it does make 
some sense. I mean, not, not to completely, you know, <laughs> prop up Microsoft or whatever. No, but sure. I mean, um, so I, I like it. I mean, I, I, I think the, the, the cross platform stuff is going to be interesting. You know, you're going to be able to, uh, and I was trying to do this yesterday and it wasn't working, but you can do stuff like create a playlist on the Xbox. And the, the, the playlist obviously has to consume uh, songs that are up in the marketplace. So you put in a couple of artists, a couple of albums, a couple of songs, you can combine them into these playlists. You can do smart playlists and so forth. But the, the, the regular playlist will sync to the cloud so that when you sign in on Windows Phone 8, which I don't have yet, or on Windows 8, and I don't have the updated app to see this, um, those things will come across. You'll be able to access and stream the same playlist and songs across all of those devices. That's and, pretty cool. And by the way, for people who don't know, you do not have access to Xbox Music on Windows 7. No, but what you do have... Well, see, actually, you sort of do. What, what you don't have access to is all of Xbox Music, right? Okay. So Xbox Music is literally the rebranded... Zune. Zune. But it's also improved, right? So... Uh, Microsoft has said that uh, Windows Phone 7 users will continue to access the services just as they always did. It, it will be hitting Xbox Music on the back end, but you won't know the difference. It works the same way. Um, the Zune PC software, which they've sort of retroactively renamed to Zune Music plus Video or whatever, but the Zune software will work in the same way. You're going to access that back end store. Um, I've been looking all day to see whether the Windows 8 app was going to be updated today. I sort of assumed it would be because they were talking about how this was launching on Tuesday, but um, so far not not happened yet. I'm curious what they're going to do with podcasts. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So uh, yeah. <coughs> if I don't know, if, uh, I'm gonna. I'll probably see Rob Greenley. Um, I will see Rob Greenley the week of build. Um, I'll ask him about that. But my there's not a lot of call for it. Uh, inside of Microsoft, obviously, there's a lot of call for it. Rob, outside. Rob uh, sent me an email. I actually, I did a podcast with Rob on Saturday, yeah. and he's oh, really, did he really? Oh, yeah, good. and uh, he's he's pushing for uh, there's like a suggestion section, yep, for Microsoft, and uh, I'll post a link in the chat in a little bit, and you could kind of say like, hey, I want podcasting. Yeah, and the, the problem, you know, here's the problem. So on the Xbox specifically, for the next year or so, we're kind of stuck. Yeah, because this platform is at the end of life, and even though there is like obviously there's like an app store. That's not really a store, but there's, I guess it's a store. There's an app store for for the Xbox, right? There are apps that run on Xbox. Um, they don't really have that app store mentality like you have on Windows Phone or Windows Eight. So you can't go in there and you can buy games, obviously, but you can't buy like a really nice podcast app or something like that. It's not it's not that wide open. I mean. Um, eventually, I, I suspect the next Xbox will have that capability, right? So today, uh, you can get Slapdash Podcast on both Windows Phone and on Windows 8. Maybe in the future, on the next Xbox, we'll be able to get that app on the Xbox because porting apps to the next Xbox hopefully will be as easy as porting between Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8. Yeah. You know, we'll have to see. We just don't know yet, so we'll see. Uh, very cool stuff, Paul. And we need to wrap it up. We're out of time. Yes, we are. You have to go. Losing my voice too. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go for sushi tonight. Oh man, that would that would be great. I re you know, every time I look at your Facebook, you always have these like unbelievable dinners. Well, okay, but let me let me set the stage for how badly you're gonna kick my ass tonight. Why? What are you I having? Am having? Guess what I'm having for dinner tonight. So we talk. I just like sushi, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Tonight I'm having meatloaf. Okay. So. There you win. Are you not fan of me? Are, do you not meatloaf's like meatloaf? Fine. I'm just saying on on the on the scale of meals, meatloaf is over here and sushi is over here. You know what the problem with sushi is for me? Like when I order, like I want to order a behemoth of a platter oh, of sushi. Yeah. Like I want to get like thousands of it. And I, my wife is great, but when it comes to food, she'll do this. She'll go, "Really? You want to get that too? <laughs> like you want you want the UFO roll also?" Yeah, my wife will say, I'm not really that hungry, so you're going to have to help me eat that. And I will say, excellent. Excellent. No, no, no. I'll get I'll get like, well, you already ordered like six rolls. You want one more? Yeah. And what I end up doing is I'll order it. She'll get loaded. And then I end up ordering two more rolls at the end of the dinner. Right. It's a whole thing. I want I want as many rolls as I want. So my my wife went out, I want to say Friday, and I think it's going out again this Friday. And I look, those nights for me are like, I will get sushi on Friday night and bring it home, you know, because if I stay in the place, 
I'm going to wake up suddenly and owe someone $200. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's really dangerous for me to sit in the restaurant. Yeah. Because I will never stop ordering. Something. You'll just keep eating and eating. Yeah. You're, well, it you're a big man. It doesn't ever boy. fill me up. No, that's the whole problem with sushi. You yeah. got you actually have to have self control and kind of pull back. Yeah, I have no, I have no self control. Um, I had a question for you, and now I don't remember the question, but it was pretty important. Okay. And I have no clue what I was going to ask you, and that's awful because I said, "Wow, I really had to ask Paul this question." Okay, it's not about next week. It's not about next week. Uh, next week you have the you're coming to New York for the well, launch. We're going to talk. We'll, we'll do this again before that happens. Yeah. So, so Tuesday we're going to do it, and Tuesday I think Mary Jo's going to be on with us on Tuesday. Oh, good. Okay. Um. But now I don't remember, and that's awful. Uh, you go to our website, guysfromqueens.com. If you miss any portion of the show, you could catch it on our website, gfknetwork.com or Guys from Queens, or you can watch on windsupersite.com. That's Paul Therott's website. A lot of information there, all about windows and phones and all these things that you're interested in <laughs> at Windsupersite. Uh, no, no audible pick this week. Uh, next week, we'll have an audible pick, I promise. So... Uh, by the way, I'm sorry. Yeah. To interrupt. I, I just got an email from Xbox. General email, not like a beta email. And it says, starting this month, the Xbox Live update comes to your console with a bunch of stuff like Internet Explorer, uh, better search, personalized movie, TV, and game recommendations, which is also going to be a feature of Windows Phone 8, by the way. Um, that's interesting. So this suggests that this update is not happening in November. It's actually happening like soon. So maybe... Does anybody have an Xbox 360? Was there an update? I thought, I thought it started rolling out today. Oh, I'm going to have to go look. I'll go look at my other because this one's got the, you know, the beta. Yeah. I'll have to go look at the other one. Uh, I, I could have swore to you because I, yeah, that uh, dashboard update uh, unifies Microsoft Entertainment. Yeah, I think it's happening now. It's not like a, you know, if you're used to the current version, it works, you know, as you would expect. Um, but, some, yeah, some interesting stuff. It's there. amazing how this device has changed. The UI of this device over the last couple of years has totally, totally changed. If you go back and look at the first uh, UI, they had that kind of blade UI with yeah. the, you know, just a swish across. You know, totally it really different. looks it really looks old fashioned today. Yeah, uh, compared to what they have now, they did a good job with this. All right, Paul, let's wrap it up. Okay, uh, that's it, guys. So if you're watching, if you're listening on a uh, podcast form and not watching live, uh, again, you can go to our website, guysfromqueens.com. You can subscribe to us. We're on iTunes. I was gonna say we're on the Zoom, but <laughs> I don't know anymore. So uh, you can subscribe on iTunes. Uh, from uh, this moment on, and uh, we'll see you all you can next still week. Still subscribe on Zoom. That's I guess you can. Yeah, I guess you can. Uh, see you next week, guys. Good night.